and welcome back today we are going to be flying out the f86 a5 saber for many of you this plane does not need an introduction whatsoever because it has been in the game for the last 27 years for the people that aren't familiar with the differences between the a models and the f models of the saber i want to very quickly gloss over them the differences between this thing the a5 as well as the f25 is that the f25 has a better engine has much more trust is much better in the sustained however this is counteracted by the fact that the a5 does actually turn better it has wing slats these parts of the wing just slide forward at a certain speed which helps tremendously when it comes to your maneuverability however there is one little issue with this it absolutely kills your speed and together with the fact that your engine is also weaker than the other f models you can see where this is going you are going to be running out of speed relatively quickly now it's not as bad as something like a super mystere it's not as bad as something like the uh, mig 21 for example but it's uh, definitely a plane that once it loses its energy it will not get it back very quickly and then when we look at the f25 as well as the f30 those two are identical then the f2 saber actually gets 20 millimeters other than that they are also identical to the f25 as well as the f30 and then when we look at the F40, it's actually pretty apparent when you look at the plane. I'm going to look at the uh, premium one here. You can tell that this is slightly longer. The uh, wings on the F40 are slightly elongated. And it's not really that noticeable in a game when it comes to the roll rate. But the roll rate is slightly worse. And that's just because it probably has more drag. I'm not entirely sure what the exact reason is for it. But you can tell that the wings are slightly longer. It also has wing slats. So you get... Roughly the same maneuverability as the A5, but you get a much better engine. Then you also have the CL-13B, which is a completely different beast. This plane is an absolute menace. It's kind of unfortunate that it's uh, this BR right now. It's a plane that I have flown out quite a bit. It does get the wing slats. It gets a much better engine. But it doesn't get the elongated wing. So you essentially are looking at an A5 with an absolutely souped to hell engine. And it has some of the best flight performance out of any subsonic. The issue is you are at 9.3 and you can't you can make a loadout. So you cannot even say I want to carry the uh, missiles together with like 4 HVAR so I can defend myself against all aspect missiles. I might fly this thing out. However, I'm not really looking forward to it. But let's take a look at some gameplay here and see what we are going to be doing with this plane today. A bit of a heads up to all my new patron members as well as my new channel members. Uh, it's my birthday tomorrow and then I have no internet from Monday till hopefully Tuesday. But it might be till Friday because I'm getting optic fiber. So my internet might be out for like a week. So I'm just going to be safe here. I'm going to make six videos in advance. So if you don't appear on the list just yet, I know I'm behind. I'm just making this stuff in advance so that if my internet is actually gone for like two years, then at least I have six videos ready. So, the F86 A5. It's a good plane at 8.3. There are better picks, but it's definitely flyable. The main thing here is going to be using the fact that you are still pretty fast despite your lack of acceleration. And your ability to just kind of latch on to essentially anything because of your mix of amazing roll rate good turning performance and your ability to not hold speed that well it doesn't lose it as fast as some other planes as i said in the hangar it's not a plane like the super mystere where you will dump your speed away in half a second however it's also not something like the a32 or the fga9 for example that holds its speed so well even when you're trying to slow down that you end up overshooting even though you're zero throttle air braking and you definitely don't want that to happen in this thing it is pretty squirmly it is pretty good in the defensive posture in the sense that you are hard to hit. However, you will run out of speed very quickly and you will become a sitting duck towards the entire enemy team. So you do want to be careful about going defensive. If it's one on one, you can reverse people, you can outturn them, but you need to make it quick. Because if it takes you too long to do so, you are going to be ending up going about 500 kilometers an hour. They go vertical once or twice and you are just essentially dead. But... The opposite is also true. If you latch onto someone and you have enough airspeed, very little planes will be able to pull out of your guns. And if they do, most of the time there will be a plane like the Vampire over there that sure they outturn you, sure they are able to just stay outside of your guns, but they are slower than you and you can just abuse that fact. Now, here we are going decently quick. 850 to 900 kilometers an hour is a speed I try to never really go below unless I have altitude. 
like we do right here. I just kind of zoom past the SAP on a 5, and we just go up and we just fly away from it. We get a bit of separation and you can tell that he does not have the speed to pull into this. And we just kind of keep this loop up. We will end up looping directly behind him. And there's just very little that he can do because we have position here. We have the speed. He does not and we have a much better airframe. We dive on him. He doesn't even react to us. In true 50 cal fashion, we just one shot his tail control. He gets set on fire by someone else. I'm not entirely sure what happened there, but we still end up getting the kill. So all is well. We are diving on the vampire. MiG-15 on the right. However, he is flying away from us. So he won't really be in the picture. Vampire is crit. MiG-15 shows a masterclass in touching grass. And we get two of the kills. And now we just keep on flying straight. MiG-15 in front. See Vixen in front. See Vixen, we're probably not going to be able to catch. MiG-15 is in a dogfight, so we are going to be pulling into him. We have position here, we are below him. So even though he might be better in the vertical, even though he does turn better than us in the long run, we should be able to just pull inside of the shot here. And we definitely do, but then he turns out and the F9F just kind of beats us to the punch. And we end up getting nothing. On to the next one. We merge with an A28 and he is... Kind of turning already, he is maneuvering, we are going 900, we are going faster than he can in a straight line. Which means that we have an energy advantage of approximately 260,000 Big Macs with some extra SARS on top. So we just kind of merge, we fly past him and we gain separation, which is the most important thing here. Because we don't hold our speed that well and the A28 at low speed is actually pretty nasty against this thing. So I'm actually just gonna bank all my speed into altitude. And then force him into climbing up to us. Now he will not have the energy to do this. He will not be able to come anywhere near us. So I'm just going to drain his balls like we do. And just see if I can bait him into pitching up to us. And because of his position and because he clearly wants to take shots at us. I'm just going to constantly close this loop up. And I'm going to make him go more and more vertical. While trying to just kind of stay fast myself. Of course we're not going to try to go 800. I'm just trying to go fast for my relative position. And I'm trying to gain position because if I just try to go for the shot here, it will either end in a head-on or it will end in him just shooting me down. So I don't want that. I kind of dive in, pick up some speed, get closer to him. He takes the bait. He starts pitching up for us and he keeps burning speed while doing this. And once I notice I am in position, I can really tighten my grip and just start ball torsioning. And you can tell that even though that he might turn better because I have so much speed and so much position... I can just kind of raid fight on a 6. In the long run, I will not win this at all. But because of my position and my ability to kind of dive into him, he just ends up going like 300 kilometers an hour directly in my guns. And at that point, it's very hard to miss the shot. He goes down and we go into the next match, which looks the exact same, but it's actually a different match. We are climbing straight in and this is going to be the bulk of the video. Because it showcases what's wrong with the plane, but also what's pretty good about the plane. The main issue that I find myself in is the combination of 50 cals together with the fact that you can't really sustain fights very well. Because you are now forced to get a good burst in. And if they are maneuverable, if they are squirrely, and if they are hard to hit, something like a 163 or an Ariad for example. It's very hard to keep your composure and stay patient. Because you can't really one-shot them. You need to get a good burst in. But you can't really do that when you play it passively. Now these 50 cals sometimes work like 20 mils. Just like right there. But as you will see throughout the rest of the video. And especially the second half of the gameplay. You can tell that the 50 cals are just absolutely painful to use. When you keep hitting like one or two shots. And of course that's a skill issue. I should just hit more of them. But it's not very fun to use in my opinion. I'm gonna start a dogfight with the MiG-15 here. Not a winnable fight, but I'm just kind of trying to bait him into taking some maneuvers. Mackerel comes in and he's gonna be eating his ass. J-34 goes vertical directly in front of us. Mackerel isn't aware that that guy has a missile. And he ends up eating it. Now, the J-34 is a Hunter F1.5 essentially. It's a Hunter F1 with slightly more trust. It's not really... You don't really notice it. And it has missiles. But he's crit and he should be flying into a mountain very quickly here. In the meantime, we fly up and over the G91R4, probably looking at the amount of missiles that it's slinging. Uh, he's probably out now because he just really wanted that one kill and he ends up shooting everything at the same dude. We get on the 6, he actually pays attention to us, so I'm not able to shoot him down instantly. And I need to be careful because I don't want to burn my speed too quick. And I'm just going to kind of be passive, kind of be very wide about my circles. And I notice that he's in a 2v1. So instead of sticking with them and pressuring the guy that's essentially already dead, I'm going to fly towards the other side of the map 
and see if I can be useful over there. Now the entire team is kind of furballing on the six of one guy on my team. Limb 5 goes down which is absolutely massive and the Sapon 5 comes in for the head-on. Is he going to pull in for the head-on? Yes he is as they always do especially the premium ones are particularly terrible when it comes to that. Just like his Swedish friend, which ends up eating a mouthful of 50 kills. MiG-15 on R6 gets gunned down by the F-104. And now we have the main issue with a plane like this. We are dealing with two 163s essentially. A 163 and a Ki-200. And they're really not that big of an issue. But they're in a squad. They are very annoying to hit. And I only have 50 kills. Now you might say... A 50 kill versus a plane that would explode in real life by simply mixing the fuel wrong. Or throttling up too violently or just randomly exploding just because well the design was bad well in this game they don't really care about that and you will either one shot them on fire or you will never kill them at all now the a32 is not really my main priority here and i'm gonna go for the key 200 as well as the 163 get the first hit in doesn't really do anything and i'm just gonna continue on going fast and towards the 163 because i can maybe try to get another head on in and because the 163 is the 30 millimeter variant I should have a relatively easy time dodging him in the head-on and just kind of spraying him down. F104 full commits with the guy that was already basically dead and not really a threat. Which is pretty fucking annoying if I have to be completely honest with you. Because this is in the end what made this game so painful to play. But we still have a MiG-19 around you might say. So we might still have a bit of an upper hand because the MiG-19 actually has better energy than something like the 163 does. Now he dives on the first one. They go head-on. Key 200 actually dodges, which I'm kind of surprised about. It might be that he's low on ammo. It might be that he just couldn't pull in at all. But I want to be wary of the fact that he didn't pull into that head-on and see if we can maybe do something with that. Now, he does go for the bot over there, so I have a feeling that he still does have a good amount of ammo. But we'll see when the game progresses. And you can tell that with the 163, I will stick in the head-on much, much, much longer just to get closer and get more of a chance of getting my shots on target. And there it is. It's the first crit. It didn't specify what it was. So it probably did an absolute bunch of nothing. And the teammate that I had is nowhere to be found. We have another one across the map. And I am 2v1 essentially at this point. Versus two rocket planes that are just extremely annoying to deal with. Now the one on my 6 is not going to be catching us. He's not going to be cutting us off either. And we're going to go for the key 200 that's directly in front of us. Go for the shot, we don't pull enough. And we just pull out and fly away. Because we don't want to repeat of that P-51C video that we made a few days ago. Where the guy just kind of dove and then slammed up into the ground. Not exactly ideal. MiG-19 comes in, does an absolute bunch of nothing again. Keeps on flying and we are again 1v2 versus these two guys. Notice that the key 200 seems to be pulling in for the head-on. Not really going to have that. So we go closer to the 163 again. We get more hits in. And we just kind of fly away again. We are trying to pressure them so they stay relatively slow. And I'm also trying to set them up for the MiG-19. But the MiG-19 is trying its absolute hardest to not pressure them at all. And just constantly fly away. He doesn't need to kill them. He doesn't need to be the best player in the game. He All he needs to do really is just kind of be in the area. So it takes some of the energy out these two planes. That's the main thing. If you can pressure these guys with multiple people, they will eventually run out of energy, even though they are rocket planes. And then they are sitting ducks, and I can very easily spray them down. But now they are all just going 800 plus all the time. And we know that 163s and key 200 on pretty low amounts of fuel are just extremely annoying to hit. Hit the 163 center mass, even in the fuel tank. Doesn't even set it on fire. Doesn't even do anything to him. And we need to disengage again. MiG-19 comes in. Doesn't even really approach them. Just kind of keeps on flying. And we just do the same thing again. We loop on over. He just flies into the guns of the 163s. Instantly gets shot down. And now we are all really alone. Key 200 pitches up for us. I should be able to pull out of his guns here. Set him up for the A4E. And then we will continue on for the 163. A4E doesn't hit them. But he is helping. He is doing his best. And that's all I need right now. Now as long as he doesn't keep turning with the key 200. I should have some use of his present. Because he's going to force him to turn. And I'm going to try to clean his 6. Before that the 163 actually kills him. And we pressure him. 163 breaks off of the A4E. Which is perfect. Might be because he's out of fuel as well. Sap on the 5 coming in. The guy that pulled in last second earlier. This time he's committing. But he actually dodged to my surprise. We then pull into the 163. Get more hits on the guy. And he's just not really damaged. He's not really feeling it. 
I'm hoping that he will feel the A4E with its amount of 20 millimeters, but he misses, unfortunately for us. He is pressuring him, he is pushing him slow, but the Saab 5 is coming in now. And the A4E is just not really paying attention to his 6, and he ends up getting shot down by an A9B. A little bit unfortunate. 163, I think to myself, can I kill this guy? Saab 5 takes the correct trajectory for us to re-engage him. And we are pulling him quite quickly. We are getting pretty close. I'm just making sure that I do not get missiled. I line it up. I'm a little bit too fast. I hold the trigger down. I just get more hits. Make sure that I do not get 30 milled. And he's gonna land. Sap on the 5 comes in. Key 200 is also on the runway. So I am 1v1 with this guy. And I should be able to dogfight this dude. Because the Sap on the 5 is just not that maneuverable. We reverse him instantly. We get a crit. It again doesn't say what it is in the bottom right. Which means that it basically did nothing. And we're gonna try to clean this up. Make sure that he dies. Get more hits. And this is my issue with 50 kills. I've hit that 163 with like 20 to 40 shells. This guy just keeps taking on the beating. And yes, I might have been able to aim a little bit better. Yes, it's also a skill issue, but it's just super annoying. Now he finally dies. And then we have a minute and 10 seconds of fuel left. Now this wouldn't be that much of an issue. If I had a bit more ammo, I would have just absolutely bum rushed him. I thought to myself, I can maybe get away from it. Maybe we can land, take back off. But the tickets just went down too quickly. And this is why nowadays you see me very often just kind of go for the balls in approach. Maybe I'll die. Maybe I'll run out of fuel. But if I go back to the runway, especially when it's this far away, the match timer and the tickets in general are just not in my favor. But that's a topic for another time. Thank you all for watching. And you will see me all in the next one.